Hey guys, Danny the Medic here. Welcome to the channel. Now today I'm going to show you the guitar that I finished building. This is called the Premium Les Paul Style Guitar instead of buying a Gibson. All right. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't buy a Gibson, it is only because, well, let me start from the beginning. A long time ago, I had a dreadnought, acoustic dreadnought, right? It's shaped like that, you know? And uh, lately, I picked up the hobby of electric guitars, and I really, you know, to me, a guitar is shaped like that. No, not like a woman. Come on. Anyway, right? So, the, uh, I bought a lot of guitars, including, you know, stuff like this over here, right? It is shaped like that, right? So to me, you know, this is, oh my God, it's so heavy. This is a guitar shape, by the way, you know, and this is a Harley Benton. I got like several Harley Bentons in this shape, as well as a uh, PRS 245 that is a single cut. Let me put this back. Okay. So very basically, over time, you know, uh, you know, like because of the electric guitar hobby, uh, I heard about these very expensive guitars, you know, like much more expensive than it needs to be, much more expensive than the guitar should be, ridiculously priced, you know, a premium guitar. You know, it, it brings you some stuff. I, so over the period of time I looked into like, uh, you know, Gibson, I found out that Gibson just ain't going to cut it. Right, Gibson got an inferior finish, poorly designed neck, and that's not the fault of Gibson. Obviously, Gibson made the Epiphone line up to modern standards, but Gibson, the Gibson, they're just trying to do legacy stuff. So it's like back then in the 50s, when 60s, when, when they first made it, they don't know what's going on. They don't know what they're doing. So they just built something and they sold it, you know? And they did their very best back then, but you know, given like 60 years of advancement, now you got stuff like Epiphone. But so Gibson, even though it's extremely pricey, to me it's not a premium product, you know. So I looked and uh, I saw like uh, Eastman guitars, they got the SB, you know, son of a, you know, and uh, I looked at it, right? It got like Seymour Duncan 59, CTS parts, you know, yada, 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 yada. Premium stuff, you know, but then I didn't like the horn, you know, and, and the headstock got the little, you know, little crop to it. I'm just like, eh, yeah, I'm not a fan. So I, I said, you know what, I'm just going to make my own, right? I ordered all the stuff, uh, Seymour Duncan's 59s, CTS parts, and Switchcraft switch, and Jack, and then I got, uh, see, up here, we got the Grover vintage style tuners. Graph Tech Nut, you know, the stuff that you find in premium guitars, right? And I have had comments in previous videos that says, oh, well, where do you get the premium neck and the premium body? I'm like, that's, that's no such thing, okay? Because, like, there, now there is such, uh, such a thing. Because you can buy all sorts of exotic woods, you know, with all kind of spalting and, and flaming and you know, like, like all that fancy, but all that fancy doesn't make it a better working guitar, you know? So to me, wood is wood, right? So I have ordered what I thought to be a mahogany body and a maple neck with a bolt on and a better cutaway and stuff like that, you know? I wanted maple because I, I enjoy maple as a pool player. You know, my maple shaft, it feels great. Uh, I want that feeling in the neck as well. And maple, because the grain of the wood is so tight, you know, I wouldn't need to go and putting like a grain filler in it and all that stuff. But when it came, it turned out to be mahogany, as people pointed out. At first I looked at it and said, like, this doesn't look like the maple I'm used to. But, you know, the, the website said maple, you know, it's from solo guitars, right? And so I'm like, maybe it's a special kind of maple, whatever. And boy, did I learn my lesson, right? So when I sanded, you know, it turned out that it's mahogany and that they had grain filled it and shipped it that way. You know, so when I sanded the front of the headstock to put my finish, right, I, I applied the black, I put the polyurethane on it. I think it's, yeah, it's like a water-based polyurethane maybe or whatever. The, it was like a min wax, you know. 
and it just seeped in and I could see all the grains of the wood. But after like a thousand coats, you know, I finally was able to get it flat and a pretty glossy finish. All right. And if you're asking why I shaped the headstock like this, this is a tribute to McCarty, right? Because I got inspired by the McCarty's patent. You know, McCarty. He Ted McCarty. He invented the Les Paul as per the patent, you know, that was filed in 1950, whatever it was. It has his name on it as the inventor. So, legal document. I believe it. Patent expired so long ago. But yeah, so it took me forever because this was not maple. It took me five times longer to apply this finish to the headstock. Five times longer, I had to put a coat, wait for it to dry, put another coat, wait for it to dry, sand it back. Then I realized it's not enough coats. Now I could have bought grain filler, but I didn't have like the uh, motivation to go and put grain filling and everything. And it's like, oh man, now I gotta go buy some more stuff. I don't wanna. And I got the whole bottle of water-based poly that it could, I, mean, I still got like 90% of it left after doing that, right? So, um, the graph tech nut, I'll tell you, right? I, I had an idea. I said, let me put a bone nut. Bone nut. You know, everyone loves bone nut. So I took the bone blank. I filed it and shaped it and everything. Then came time to cut the slots of the bone nut. Then I looked up the prices of uh, nut slotting files, like proper ones. It's so expensive. I said, oh, F that. It's back to the graph tech nut because it came pre-slotted. You know, sure I can buy a pre-slotted bone nut, but I already had the bone blanks and I already filed it all down and said, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to put the, put the graph tech nut, you know, so that's good. I uh, leveled all the frets. You know, we had some buzzing. Right, we had some buzzing, right? So when this neck came, you know, it was got some high spots and stuff. So I took care of that. I polished the fret ends, you know, all nice and smooth. It's no longer cutting your fingers open. I polished the front of the frets over here. Like when, when you know, you slide it, oh, it feels so smooth. You know, when you do the bends, very smooth, very smooth bending. Very, very smooth bending. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I did the wiring uh, 1950s style as per the Stumac diagram and I got help from Six String Supplies video. Wonderful tutorial, except that, you know, it doesn't, you know, you can watch a video, it doesn't make you any better. So my soldering was extremely sloppy, but I did use a multimeter, I test other connections and they were connected. So they're connected, all right. Uh, so I'll tell you what I encountered during the making of this guitar, right? Firstly, uh, the neck pocket and, and everything, uh, and, and you know, it wasn't straight enough, you know? So when I put it together, right, the neck was kind of like uh, leaning that way too much. And then so it got more space here and less space here, right? So more space here, less space here. Right, so then I took the sandpaper and I sanded the pocket, you know, and I brought it back straight. So now it is even spacing between here and here. All right, and something that's not the fault of Solo, uh, the holes for these things were very small, made for the import size, right? But I bought the, uh, you know, the American stuff because made in America is so much better in the guitar world, according to many fanatics, you know, but it is good quality stuff, right? So I got CTS pots. I couldn't fit it through. I had to make the holes bigger. Uh, over here is a switchcraft switch over here. The nut thing, it wouldn't go into the existing hole. I had to make that hole bigger. Right? The Seymour Duncan 59 pickups. The screws were so long, it hit the bottom of the, the, of the hole. You know, the, 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 whoops. the routed out area, I had to take my drill, drill deeper holes. And after I put it all together, the pickup uh, cavities were ever so slightly that way. 
So I had, to, I had to like, you know, file around and move everything this way. The body did come pre-drilled with all these like uh, eight holes for the pickup rings. So I had to fill those with toothpicks, tight bonded and uh, hammered in, cut them flush, and then moved it over pre-drilled holes for the pickup rings. And now the pickups are cent centered uh, to the strings. All right. That and... Um, I guess that's it, right? Am I missing anything? All right. Oh, if you're asking me to play it for you so you can know how it sounds, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm Danny the Medic, not Danny the Musician. If I even try to do this for you, right, it's not going to be like the other videos go. They rip out the guitar. Oh, dude, this is a signal chain. It's going through that pedal. It's going to go through that amp. Do you see any amp? Do you see any pedal? You don't see nothing, right? If I play this for you, you're just going to be like, dude, he suck. And then that's going to be the end of the video. So I'm not going to play it. What's it sound like? It sounds like Seymour Duncan 59s. Plenty of the videos out there. Plenty of videos. I'm just a hobbyist, guys. Hobbyist. You know, not a musician. All right. What else do I have to say about this? All oh, right, yes. So after I discovered, you know, to my... Uh, you know, sadness that it's not a maple neck, right? I, I, I went and I contacted uh, Solo Guitars, and I said, dude, the website said maple. I wanted maple. So I bought it, got it. It's not maple, you know? And then they're like, oops, sorry. You know, the distributor or whoever must have changed it and didn't let us know, right? So they went to the website, deleted the word maple. Now I see the word mahogany on there. And then they're like, oh, we don't have any maple necks to send you. You know, if you want to, you can uh, send this back to us for refund. I'm like, send it back? This is after I did everything already. You know, so I'm not going to send it back. I put all the work into it, the effort. You know, the fret work was like two hours because, you know, it, it was a lot of work. And then I had to like refit the neck. I did a whole ton of stuff. So I typed them back in the email and said, oh, how about you just like give me a percent off and we call it a day? They came back with, to me and they said, okay, we'll give you 15% off the price. I'm like, ah, fine, that's good enough. Because what's the alternative, guys, right? Even if they have another maple neck and they send me a maple neck, then I'm going to have to redo all the fretwork, you know, and I already did it once. And there's nothing wrong with mahogany. You know, mahogany is fine. You know, now there's some people out there who are nuts trying to convince me that the different woods matter. Oh, maple sounds like this. You know, uh, mahogany sounds like that. Bang, bang, cling, 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 cling. You know, I'm looking at it and say, dude, this is an electric guitar, all right? You know, I have acoustics in the past, and, and yeah, you know, the wood matters. You know, you get a crap piece of wood, it's going to be a crap-sounding guitar. But this is electric. The point of the wood is to be a stable platform. There are going to be all sorts of nonsense about how the vibrations travel through the guitar and back again and sustain and sustain. I'm looking at it, it's like, do you really care? You know, it may be different by a slightly, but I don't think anyone in real life would ever notice that. You know, a lot of stuff out there, and, and I'll tell you, right, guitars is close to the heart, you know. When you, when you buy a wooden butcher's block, it's made out of mahogany or whatever, right? There's no investment of feeling in it, you know? But when you get a guitar, you invest your feeling in it. It is a tool of your expression, your musical expression and all that stuff. I can understand, you know, why people tend to add things to a guitar that just simply is not there, you know? They're, they're trying to tell you something like, uh, you know... I don't know. Just pick your myth. Pick pick your whatever myth, you know. Oh, they're going to be like, nitrocellulose. They're going to start licking the nitro. Oh, so much delicious tone. I said, no, sir, that's not how it works. The finish is for you to protect the guitar from the environment. That's the point of the finish, you know. And, of course, nitro does a really crappy job at that. It breaks, it flakes, it bends, it damages easily. It's like such a horrible finish. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like purposely trying to get a car that breaks down on you, you know, and then you have to spend a lot of money to fix. 
like like a BMW, you know, like you want to change a tire in the BMW, you know, you got to pay five times the price. It's like, why? You know, why you even buy it to begin with? Oh, because BMW premium lick, 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 lick. You know, that, that's just brainwashing going on with the marketing and all that stuff. But anyway, because I also put feeling in my guitar, right? Not buying a Gibson truly mattered to me, right? Because I looked into it. Gibson, the bullies. They were suing everybody. They tried to sue PRS over a single cut. Look at it. Look at it. So, PRS started making what's known as their single cut. Well, kind of like it lost on my vest there. See? Single cut. Whoop-dee-doo. It's a single cut, guys. You know? Guitars are always shaped like that. And so it has a single cut. Cutaways are always like that. You know? And Gibson trying to sue PRS. You know, bring them to the lawsuits and, you know, for some baloney like that. I'm like, what kind of company does that? You know, it's like, give me a freaking break. You know, your patent expired long ago. You had your time to make your money legally and everything. And now they, they're going to go and try to sue PRS. Of course, PRS won. You know, and that's why I'm like, you know what? Like, Gibson, the way they bully people... You know, lucky they, they lucky it was PRS who got sued because PRS got money. You know, they, they got money. They've been selling for a long time. They're very successful. They probably got a mountain of gold somewhere. So they're able to fight back against Gibson. But when Gibson sends those like cease and desist uh, whatever type of lawyer letters over to the small mom and pop luthier or whoever they're sending it to, small companies and stuff, they cannot afford to go to court with Gibson. So Gibson's bullying everybody, right? And their products are based on legacy designs that are inferior to today's standards. And I was just looking at that and said, you know what, forget it. A company like that, company like that, you know, it's not something I want to put my heart into, you know? I don't want a Gibson guitar because, you know, it's close to my heart, right? I can't, it, it wouldn't, you know, I, I have feelings, okay? You know, I, I cannot buy a Gibson Les Paul and have someone look at me and say, oh, you got a Gibson. You sold out, right? You, you gave money to a company that bullies other people, right? And of course, they have an inferior finish, inferior construction of the neck, right? And, and it's grossly overpriced. And the marketing, they're playing mind games with the, like, uh, how you can buy it extremely cheap in Germany and they charge you a lot here in the USA. You know, there's all these things about Gibson Company that makes me not want to own a Gibson. You know, I will not put a Gibson on my lap. No thank you. Right, so, but I did want a premium guitar and I appreciate the classic shape. So, here we have it. Thanks for watching my video. You have a good one. Anything else I forget? No, I'm not playing it for you. I'm not a musician. See, look, I'm just pawing at it like a cat.